to a new edition of Planet Waves TV. My name is Eric Francis, the editor of planetwaves.net and the host of planetwaves.tv. Hi out there in YouTube and Facebook land. I'm back from <clears throat> back from the Ukraine. Uh, woke up in Switzerland on Saturday morning and then flew uh, back to the United States on Saturday afternoon and it's good to be home and Europe uh, was absolutely amazing. Uh, many of you uh, are familiar with when I would file my column everywhere from London to Amsterdam to Mykonos and um, it was fun to uh, do some editions of uh, all, all of the things I do um, from far away. All right, let's take a look at the astrology. Uh, for for the week, uh, we've published Monday morning horoscope number 214. For those of you who don't know, I write a weekly horoscope that publishes uh, every Sunday night it's called the Monday morning horoscope, and it's the best weekly horoscope uh, that's out there. It's a subscriber product. You have to be a core community member to get it, but it is worth it, and you get lots of uh, stuff with it. Anyway, the week of um, Monday morning number 214 uh, is the is the week of Imbolc. It's the week of um, the winter cross quarter day or um, the midwinter holiday from the Celtic calendar. Uh, the, these are the days. These cross quarters are the days between a solstice and an equinox. Uh, there are four of them. We're familiar with Beltane in May and Samhain in uh, early November and. Um, what's the uh, Lamas or Lunessa in early August? So this is the midwinter holiday, also called Candlemas, and it's a power point of the year. Uh, it is so because it's a tipping point in the season and a balancing point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, or uh, vice versa, in the southern hemisphere between the summer solstice and the summer solstice and the midsummer holiday and, and the autumn equinox in the southern hemisphere. I'm, I'm a little compromised on the southern hemisphere stuff, but I, I do my best to serve you if you're from down there. And so uh, I, I like to check in with this chart every uh, year and get a feeling uh, for what it is about. And here is what I am looking at. Uh, first of all, we start with the moon in Gemini at uh, on on this day. Oh, and by the way, my chart is cast for 4.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 4th. Uh, so this event is overnight uh, from Monday to Tuesday uh, in in most American time zones, and uh, it, it would be solidly, um, li well, later today, I guess, in, oh, anyway, cancel that. 4.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Feb 4. Uh, puts puts the sun right at the middle of Aquarius, right at the, the midpoint. Um, and so w when uh, we we get that chart, first of all, uh, just noting the Gemini moon and uh, that Gemini moon is going to make a lot of squares to things. So that's a reminder to be clear and as succinct as possible in your speech, succinct as possible in your speech. Okay, uh, I am looking at still quite a few things in Capricorn. Uh, that includes Pholus, and uh, that's a centaur. Lots of juice coming out of that thing, and then Pallas Athene. Lots of politics and the South Node. But skipping to the major points, we're still uh, looking at the uh, conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. Uh, that was exact for one and only time on the twelfth. Of, uh, of, of January, the conjunction will not repeat, so there's no Saturn retrograde that goes back as far as Pluto, um, and soon Saturn will be in Aquarius. That happens in, a, in, a, in, a, in actually in about six weeks, right after the spring equinox, but this conjunction is still within two degrees, so it's still a very strong. It's still in full force and effect and and should be uh, recognized as, as such. Uh, kids born with this in, in, in this time are, are going to be seen uh, by future astrologers to have uh, th this uh, this powerful aspect in their charts. And, and what we have is an aspect that is describing some major state of change uh, that the that the world is in and, and that our societies are seeing it. We're seeing it in England as Brexit, which was made official late last week, we're seeing it in the United States as the incredibly divisive um, 
uh, impeachment of, uh, of of Donald Trump, um, wherein the uh, the United States Senate voted that it was going to have a trial without any witnesses and without any documents and, and to think that most of these people are lawyers and, uh, and and they think that it's okay to have a trial without uh, without witnesses I mean how, how, how is that even possible I mean have you thought much about this and and every, everyone can see clearly uh, what it is but w- what it is astrologically is uh, a, a representation in real life of the ways in which all of these very intense transits through Capricorn have had a way of just demolishing protocol and tradition. And it, it is um, probably true that there's no going back. We're going to need to find uh, other ways to address this and uh, fi- find uh, some new traditions. But I, I don't know of, of anything that could possibly replace the tradition of having witnesses testify to their version of the truth at a trial, and I can't think of any better way uh, to say we are terrified of the truth, we're not interested, and we don't want to know it, uh, than, um, you know, having uh, a trial with no witnesses. So this is the, the like, real effects, the, the real-life events connected with the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto basically are the culmination of Brexit and the impeachment of Donald Trump. And we begin to enter all new territory fairly soon. But let's stick to this current chart. Um, Mercury, as of today, is n- newly in Pisces. Uh, it entered uh, at some point yesterday, I think. It's um, moving along. It's about to go retrograde in a few weeks, so we're it, probably in or close to the shadow phase. Uh, and there's a lot of other things in Pisces right now. That includes uh, Centaur, Nessus, Neptune, and Venus. So the sky right now is dominated by an Earth sign, Capricorn, and a water sign, Pisces. That usually works quite well to have uh, Capricorn and Pisces working together. They're actually quite compatible signs. They're both feminine signs uh, in the structure and the durability of, uh, of, of Capricorn goes very well with the intuition and the creativity and the sensitivity of, of, um, of Pisces. And lots of these planets are hanging out in a, um, in a, in a big 60 degree angle, a sextile. Well, a group, group of them in, um, in, in Pisces and a group of them in Capricorn. And so uh, right now, there's the potential for actual balance in in the um, in the world right now, and it's important to take advantage of these moments where uh, there, there there where there is an image of balance in in the charts, because it's not always the case. It's often the case where there's going to be a competitive situation, where there's going to be um, uh, f- forces that are uh, somehow additionally at odds with one another. Uh, there, there is often a, uh, a, a situation where there are invisible forces undermining things, but right now there's a, a relative uh, a state of calm and, and a state of balance, and I suggest that you take advantage of it while it's here. Um, among, uh, among all of, the, all of these um, points is that Jupiter is making a 60-degree angle to Neptune. Jupiter creeps along, not too quickly, not too slowly, and so that means that it holds its um, aspects for a while. It's going to be in Capricorn all year till it enters Aquarius in December, and for much of the time that Jupiter is in Capricorn, uh, it is um, making a sextile to, Mer- uh, to, to Neptune in Pisces. And uh, this is going to provide a stabilizing effect, I think. Uh, N- Neptune in Pisces, uh, and and if you've uh, if you've caught on to this, uh, you know, shoot me an email, please, at efc at ericfrancis.com, All just the normal spellings. Uh, I, I think that um, N- Neptune in Pisces has proven to be um, more troublesome than than uh, maybe we were expecting. And uh, I think more troublesome than it's been given credit for in that it is um, having this invisible effect of uh, keeping people trapped in their delusional bubbles. Um, And this is a pervasive problem, I think, that spans the entire 
political spectrum. Uh, I, I'm not an adherent to any one uh, political cause or or political side. You'll probably recognize that most of my politics are pretty hardcore progressive, but I don't see that coming out of any of the existing political camps. But what I see running across the spectrum of the political camps is difficulty uh, maintaining any objectivity whatsoever, uh, any any ability to, uh, to to be reflective uh, or or to even notice that one's own mental tendencies are quite similar to the mental tendencies on the other side. Uh, for example, any situation we could think of a couple where witnesses are not welcome, where where both sides of the, of the issue uh, are are not welcome, and I, and I, I I suggest being skeptical of that and calling witnesses if you if you need to, and making sure that you are. Uh, constantly challenging your own viewpoint and making sure that you are in tune with a, a broader uh, set of circumstances and ideas than you might normally be inclined to uh, to be. All right, uh, I am at my uh, 11 minutes here. I, I try to keep these YouTubes uh, down to about 10 minutes. I'm going to upload to Facebook first, and then we'll bounce this over to um, to my friends in Zaporozhye, Ukraine. Hi, Kate. Hi, Anatoly. Thank you for um, moving these videos. Once again, please click subscribe, share this video, and check out the brand new planetwaves.net. Um, we will post the weekly horoscope uh, in case you're new to Planet Waves so you can see it there. And um, thanks for tuning in, and bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.